Capcom has been on a roll with compilations during the 8th generation of video gaming. They've released newer compilations of not only their classic IPs like Mega Man and Street Fighter, but I've delved a little deeper into their past like their history with Disney of all freaking companies. Granted, not including what's in these compilations, they've all had quirks with their releases. Like, why the hell did Disney Afternoon Collection not release on any Nintendo consoles considering these were NES games? I know the Wii U was struggling, but considering Capcom was supporting the Wii U Virtual Console at the time, why the hell did the first two Mega Man Legacy Collections release divided when their past compilations were fit into one disc on more dated mediums? In particular, why two discs slash apps for the X Collection? Hell, Devil May Cry fit three PlayStation 2 DVDs and one Xbox 360 DVD, for Dante's sake. And it's even worse if you want the Switch versions of those two Mega Man collections physically, which, thankfully, I do not. And why did Capcom beat em up bundle physical release only release in Japan, while well, digitally everywhere else? It's all weird, but nevertheless, they are, for the most part, fine compilations. But one Capcom compilation that's more a standout to me, on the sole basis that they contain a certain set of fighting games I've wanted to play ever since I played Tatsunoko vs. Capcom. What series is that? You'll find out on this Capcom 40th Anniversary Special Review of Capcom Fighting Collection, played on the Switch and Xbox One, with versions also released for PC and PlayStation 4. To start, here is a list of games you'll find on this collection and my thoughts on each and every one of them. Cyberbots is a fighting game based on giant mecha combat. One I really should like because, you know, mecha and kaiju tokusatsu. But I unfortunately don't because the fighting just feels stiff. All there is to say really and perhaps the only bad game on this list. That said, pretty cool to see a real storyline for each playable character and a bunch of mechs to pilot, so some positive points there. Red Earth is a game where your only fighting selection is a group of heroes taking on a rush of bosses, similar to the duology of the Mega Man fighting series, Power Battles and Power Fighters. But unlike those games, this one has a little more in common with other fighters as two players fight each other. Having aspects of Street Fighter 2, and having an actual story mode to go through like Cyberbots before, it's not bad. And the medieval fantasy setting is cool too. But the multiplayer is limited on the basis of how many characters you can select, which are all the playable protagonists. Super Gem Fighter Minimix, a fighting game involving cuter and more comedic versions of Capcom's iconic fighting game characters. Some iconic moves like Ryu's Hadouken and Chun-Li's 100 Rending Leg slash Lightning Kick are present but some other moves are so over the top, characters end up cosplaying other characters. Like Chun-Li as Jill Valentine from Resident Evil. In addition, as the title suggests, gems play a role and you must gather them for more powerful special moves. Don't let the cuteness fool you, it's still a very challenging fighting game. And a damn fine one at that. Super Puzzle Fighter 2 Turbo. Yeah, a puzzle spin-off involving those same cuter Capcom fighting characters. It's your typical competitive puzzle game, a la Puyo Puyo, by matching blocks and trying to beat your opponent by throwing junk and depending on how well you perform. And although these types of puzzle games get way too hard for me in later stages, it's still a fun romp. Hell, on the Switch, it makes the most perfect play for a handheld. And there is Street Fighter 2! Again. More precisely, Hyper Street Fighter 2. This version of Street Fighter 2 is unique in that you can choose to play in whatever style of past versions of Street Fighter 2 by that point, roster limitations and all. Even with that in mind, it's still Street Fighter 2. Why wasn't this in the Street Fighter 30th Anniversary collections with the prior versions of the same damn game? But the main attractions of this collection are the Darkstalkers games, a trilogy of fighting games involving mythic horror monsters but a bit more goofy. Some of the characters included being a vampire named Dimitri, a cat lady named Felicia, a werewolf named John Talbane, a young human girl named BB Hood who is armed to the teeth with weaponry and is completely nuts, as well as the Jiangxi, Shanko. But the most known of all characters in this franchise is the seductive and deadly succubus, Morgan Einsland. Yeah, a succubus is more popular than the vampire this go around, and arguably one of the most iconic succubi in modern fiction. So iconic. Morgan is not only fighting the likes of other Capcom characters like Ryu or Chun-Li, she is fighting the likes of Terry Bogard and Mai Shiranui. 
She's fighting the likes of Science Team Gatchaman. She's fighting the likes of Peter Parker, Wade Wilson, and James Logan Howlett even. Seriously, she's up there with Bo from Lost Girl, another popular succubus. But I digress, let's finish talking the games. The first two Darkstalkers games, respectively known as Darkstalkers the Night Warriors and Night Warriors Darkstalkers Revenge, while unique with its setting, play pretty much the same as Street Fighter 2. So for me at least, it's Darkstalkers 3 aka Vampire Savior Lord of Vampire, formerly known as World of Darkness? Huh. Anyway, while it has the polished 2D fighting gameplay Capcom is damn fine at, it does a little shake up. Instead of having typical rounds where you heal the next round, it uses the multi-level health bar in vein of Killer Instinct by Rare, and later, Dragon Ball Z Budokai. What's also really nice are the Japanese-only expansions slash ports to the game. Vampire Hunter 2 Darkstalkers Revenge and Vampire Savior 2 Lord of Vampire, each with new, if not different, rosters. Hell, I think endings from each are different just by Morgan's gameplay in each game alone. But unfortunately, Capcom didn't translate these for this compilation. I know they are older games, but even Nintendo found time to do it with the first Mother game, aka Earthbound Beginnings, would release in the West. Like, come on! Although, with the games we did get in English, there is an option to play those in Japanese if we want, so that is cool. Nevertheless, all three of these games are fantastic, with the third game being the best for sure due to the gameplay being so refined. Like with Street Fighter 30th Anniversary Edition, there is online support, but I tend to be the worst at it with fighters in general, so I generally avoid it. Yet, when I tested it out for this occasion, no one wanted to play in any of the games I wanted to play. Ah well. Alongside the games themselves, Capcom Fighting Collection contains an art collection for each game displayed, some games even having old design documents, in addition to soundtracks of said games, and can switch the background graphics of the games you're playing. Overall, Capcom Fighting Collection is perhaps the best of the modern Capcom compilations by far. At least as far as the non Mega Man games go. A great way for me to finally play Darkstalkers for the first time, and if anyone is a fan of the IP or want to try them, check it out on a decent sale.